Okay, hopefully the camera's picking this up. So, going to fuel. And then there's a uh, injector specs. Right here. Let's see if we can zoom in the camera a little more. That's getting all that. So originally, I don't know, say original value was 19.26 because it was 19 pounders. And that value was 23.7, pretty much 24. They're pretty much using 19 for the high slope and 24 for the low slope. That was stock. So these are 30 pound injectors, and people start out with pretty much 30 for the high slope and 30 for the low slope. So Order horse is connected. Update. I believe it really. It's probably gonna run like crap because of all the fuel that's fell that yet sprayed out and went down in the cylinders give it a few seconds. took a quick look at an article that's on eectuning.org, which is we get a lot of information about tuning these computers. Here's a setting I forgot to change because uh, it seems to be staying equally pig rich no matter where I set my high and low slope, which is weird. But after you set your high and low slope, you need to set your minimum injector pulse width. This guy's saying set it to zero or reduce the stock value by the difference in injector size. So... I didn't do that, so it's probably trying to idle at the minimum setting, regardless of how uh, of what the injector slopes are set for. It's only going to go as low as it hits in a minimum pulse width. It's always allowed to hit, so that's why it's running fine when I probably got under the throttle. But it was running pig rich at idle <laughs> ten uh, air fuel ratio. That's not good. So uh, minimum injector, yes, and then. Uh, there's some other settings they recommend, so I'm gonna grab my laptop and make those settings. with me to hold any cameras. This is going to be awkward. But now I'm too much right there. And the 12s for air fuel when I got wide open throttle, that is pretty good. I'll have to look at the log later. And of course they could do a lot better than you can, you know, looking at it with your naked eye. Going to fifth gear here. 
see it's hunting just a little bit, but it'll dial in. Uh, <laughs> it's getting it. Yeah, <laughs> didn't even clear the computer. F1 and 2 or about 0.9 still. I'm gonna go get me some uh, flush, flushed uh, cooling system on this. This thing's been rather warm. I don't think this has a, this either has no thermostat or it's stuck open. <laughs> I think so. going wide it opened all the way up to red line but just enough that I'm not noticing anything with drivability at all so running pretty good easy injector swap we get a chance here oh there's some cops wide open throttle test on this thing. I hate when they grind those gears. you've done your data logging and these are all the different things you could select it to a uh, log which is a lot of things you go to the chart and you can uh, put in what you want it to show so I got like four particular sensors Just select that switch in this case is miles per hour and then my RPMs mass airflow and then this is uh, it needs to be relabeled but that's my wideband and then in yellow is whatever you highlight. So if I go miles per hour, there's where I did an acceleration up to 90. Went through a couple of gears because the RPM there is in green. I can highlight the RPM. So there's, you can see every shift, first, second, third, go to miles per hour. I can, you could basically track, track everything. And you can start to put this back and basically play it back and see how everything is going. See, I'm accelerating. You'll see the see that's when the heart you can tell each time a hard accelerate accelerate it you know the ratio see it gets in elevens and let off it you know drops way down to the lean and then it's I'm accelerating third gear there, see, twelves, eleven and then the AFRs. And then uh when I let off it's gonna go way lean. So. Yep, so uh you could look to see what your readings were. Let me jump back there. Stop. Because you can also see with the RPMs and the load, you know, mass airflow, you know, reading there. As I said, that drops down real quick every time I uh, shift, so. I think first gear, let me drop, stop that, bring it back. I think I hit about 6,000 RPMs on that first first gear run there. I kind of come around the corner just holding the throttle and I punched it after from about 3,000 or so. Somewhere like that. There we go. Yeah, so hit over 6. Shifted, you know, and I dropped down to 30-something hundred. So. First gear I was, I didn't nail it until actually it was already kind of going. And you could look um, all sorts of other stuff. See, uh, miles per gallon. Yeah, I was, I think 12.5 is what I was getting. There's the miles per gallon. They dropped way down. Um, the instant miles per gallon. Let's look at that. <laughs> yeah, and that's now in yellow. Uh, let's see here. Torque and horsepower. 
I don't know if it'll let me do all those things at once. Yeah, it did. Okay. So, uh, horsepower. 264. Torque. Where was my torque peak? Showed one way back there. I don't know if that's a proper reading. Yeah, it's not right. 500 foot pounds in a way. Right here. Uh, 300. And that's pretty much what you expect from that engine. So, uh, that's calculated, you know, from the computer there. Um, got your spark advance, throttle position. Pretty much all sorts of injector duty, which is probably pretty low now. That uh, engine load is pretty low, you know. Whereas 30 pound injectors, it's not going to have that much injector duty. You've got an engine coolant temperature sensor, uh, stuff like that. You can see that I warmed that sucker up. Yeah. It's after I left the, after I left the store, I was idling 190 something, and then it kind of started creeping up, and then you can see it stepped up when I was going through those gears. Spiked up about 208 right there. That's normal. And then it kind of averaged. Uh, well, that's 208. What was that? 209. Oh, okay. The degrees are pretty close right there. So changes this scale to whatever um, sensor you're reading. Like right now, it's in degrees. Uh, mass airflow then changes it to the reading for that miles per hour. Now the scales change to you know that RPMs, uh, wide band. Pretty cool setup. I like it. Car's running great, so it's still stock engine with uh, almost 200,000 miles on it. Yep, yeah, I'll be putting a turbo on there, as is. And, uh, you know, might as well let it be the guinea pig before I drop in, you know, a uh, different engine. When I get another engine, I'll probably change the cams, maybe. I don't know. Because when I get another engine, I'll probably rebuild it. So. Anyway. That's what that all looks like. You could change the dashes and stuff. We got two of them that are on here. You could toggle between, but you can you could change them. Or you could download other ones that people have made. I've taken this one and then changed some things around for how I like it. This one here obviously has a lot more information on it. It's got my two actual narrow bands. This is my wide band, RPMs, miles per hour. Pulse width. Uh, I don't know what that's for. Oh, injector duty. I don't think that was loaded in. Spark advance, um, pressure, I don't know if that's actually there, all sorts of stuff. This is cool, miles per gallon, instant miles per gallon. Engine load, you know, which is probably only going to get up to like 70% or something, probably, you know, stock. Anyway, pretty cool. That's where it stands right now, so hopefully I'll be getting uh, ahead on the Mustang project. I know I've been kind of stalled out with it for a while. I just started putting some replacement parts in it and just kind of put it on the back burner for a while. But hopefully I can get back to it.